In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new term which describes the part of chemistry that allows us to make quantitative predictions about chemical reactions. The term is stoichiometry. It was coined in the late 18th century by a German chemist called Jeremias Richter, who, about a decade before Dalton published his theory of atoms, did some significant work on how chemicals react in fixed proportions. He took the Greek word for element and the su English suffix metri, meaning measurement, to give stoichiometry and called it the art of chemical measurement. So stoichiometry is the calculation of quantities in chemical reactions. For instance, if I take a hypothetical reaction like this, A reacting with B to give C, stoichiometry lets us ask, I have 5 grams of A, how much B do I need to react with it, and how much C is going to be produced? Before we get into how this is done, I have to remind you that all of this is based on the law of conservation of mass, that matter cannot be created or destroyed. In a chemical reaction, we cannot create or destroy atoms, we can only rearrange them. So whatever atoms you start off with, you must end up with exactly those atoms, no more and no less. This is the idea that lies behind the balancing of equations. Whatever number and type of atoms are on the reactant side, that's the exact number and type of atoms that must be on the product side. So here, for instance, you can see that we need to balance this equation because it looks like one of the two chlorine atoms on the left vanishes during the reaction. What that actually means is that it's impossible for one sodium atom and one chlorine molecule to give exactly one unit of sodium chloride. Instead, by balancing the equation like this, we find that what actually happens is that two sodium atoms react with one chlorine molecule to give exactly two units of sodium chloride. Now, in its simplest form, this equation means exactly what I just said. Two sodium atoms react with one diatomic chlorine molecule to give two units of sodium chloride. But there's no reason that we can't scale it up. We could double it. Four sodiums would react with two chlorine molecules to give four units of sodium chloride. Or 100 atoms of sodium could react with 50 chlorine molecules to give 100 units of NaCl. Or, to go to real-life quantities, two moles of sodium atoms could react with one mole of chlorine molecules to give two moles of sodium chloride. The big numbers in the balanced equations are called stoichiometric coefficients, like the coefficients in algebra. And they have the same function. They tell you how many you have of the thing that follows. More specifically, the stoichiometric coefficients tell us in what ratio these chemicals react and are produced. But, and this is important, the ratio relates to numbers of atoms or molecules, or to moles of atoms or molecules, if we go large scale. It does not relate to mass. Let me illustrate. Let's assume that we have two moles of sodium and one mole of chlorine gas and we react them together and they produce two moles of sodium chloride. How much would each of those quantities weigh? Well, if we check the periodic table, you'll see that sodium has a molar mass of 23 grams per mole, so two moles of that would weigh 46 grams. Atomic chlorine has a molar mass of 35 grams per mole, but chlorine is diatomic, so the molar mass of chlorine gas is 70 grams per mole. And if we have one mole of that, it'll weigh 70 grams. For the product, the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58 grams per mole, and we produce two moles of it, so the mass produced is 116 grams. All right, firstly, let's check that we haven't broken the law of conservation of mass. You can see that we have 116 grams of reactants in total, which equals the mass of the product, so that's okay. But now, compare the masses to the stoichiometric coefficients. The chemical equation shows a one-to-one -one ratio between the sodium and the sodium chloride, meaning for every two sodium atoms, two units of sodium chloride are produced. But look at the masses. We used 46 grams of sodium and produced 116 grams of sodium chloride. This clearly doesn't obey the ratio, and the reason is that different atoms weigh different amounts. Sure, if you use two sodium atoms, you'll be able to produce two units of sodium chloride, but the sodium chloride is heavier. It has a whole extra chloride ion attached per unit. So remember, the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients represents the mole or molecule ratio, not the mass ratio. So for the remainder of this video, we'll practice working with the mole ratios in chemical equations. So here are two problems. If you're feeling confident, pause the video now and try to solve them for yourself before I go through them. Okay, let's try the first one. 
So we have nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia gas. How many moles of hydrogen would be required to completely react with 3.2 moles of nitrogen? So the first step is to write out and balance the equation. Without the stoichiometric coefficients from the balanced equation, you can't do any stoichiometry. This also means you need to take care to get your chemical formulae right, because it's impossible to balance the equation if the formulae are wrong. So here we have nitrogen and hydrogen, both diatomic, giving ammonia, NH3, and we can balance it like this. Next, I'm going to highlight the information that I'm given in the question. What we know is that there are 3.2 moles of nitrogen. And what we want to work out is how many moles of hydrogen are needed to react with it. So to work this out, we need to look at the ratio from the equation. We can see that for every one mole of nitrogen, we need three moles of hydrogen. So the mole ratio is one to three. So however much nitrogen we have, we need three times as much hydrogen. Here we have 3.2 moles of nitrogen. So we multiply that by three to give 9.6 moles of hydrogen. And that answers the question. 9.6 moles of hydrogen will react exactly with 3.2 moles of ammonia. OK, next problem. We're still using the same chemical reaction, so no need to write out the reaction equation again. So what do we know? We're told that in a separate experiment, so we're starting from scratch but with the same chemicals, 4.5 moles of ammonia were produced. And we want to know how much nitrogen and hydrogen must have reacted. This looks like we're working backwards, but because it's all about ratios, it doesn't actually matter whether we're using reactants to find products or vice versa. So we look at the mole ratios again from the equation. It's one mole of nitrogen is to three moles of hydrogen is to two moles of ammonia. And the actual amount of ammonia that we have is 4.5 moles. So let's deal with the nitrogen first. The ratio is one part nitrogen to two parts ammonia. The 4.5 moles of ammonia that we actually have represents two parts. That's the two in the ratio. So to find out what one part is, we just divide 4.5 by two. And that tells us that 2.25 moles of nitrogen were needed. Now for the hydrogen. The ratio here is slightly more complex, three hydrogen to two ammonia. But you can see that if the 4.5 moles of ammonia represents two parts, then we can divide by two to find out what one part is, and then multiply by three to find the three parts of hydrogen. And that tells us that 6.75 moles of hydrogen were needed. As a double check, you can see that there should be three times as much hydrogen as nitrogen, because the ratio of hydrogen to nitrogen is three to one. And 2.25 times 3 does equal 6.75 moles, so we're good. Now, let me highlight these last two points on my list of tips here. Always annotate your calculations. By this I mean, write explicitly what it is that you're calculating in each step. In simple problems like this, it won't seem like it makes much difference. But as your stoichiometry calculations become longer and more complex, it becomes easier to make silly mistakes by accidentally mixing up values. Also, don't forget your units. All right, let's try one last problem. Again, try pausing the video to give this a go before you watch me working it out. We're going to look at the reaction in which iron reacts with oxygen to give iron three oxide, which you're familiar with as rust. So first, let's write and balance the equation. And now, what do we know? We're told that we have 0.083 moles of iron. And what we're calculating is how many moles of oxygen are needed to react with this amount of iron and how many moles of iron oxide are produced. So let's write out the mole ratio. We've got four iron to three oxygen to two iron oxide. And we know the amount of iron present, which is 0.083 moles. According to the ratio, this represents four parts and we need three parts of oxygen to produce two parts of rust. So to find the amount of oxygen that's required, we're going to divide 0.083 by four. This will tell us what one part is and then multiply by three, which gives us 0.06225 moles of oxygen. 
And we should think about significant figures. The stoichiometric coefficients are exact numbers, so they effectively have infinite sig figs. But we started with 0.083 moles of iron, which has only two sig figs. So our final answer should be rounded to 0.062 moles of oxygen. To find the number of moles of rust, we take the moles of iron and again divide by four, but now we multiply by two for the two parts of iron oxide. And this tells us that 0.0415 moles of iron three oxide are produced, or 0.042 moles when we round to two sig figs. Note that if you looked carefully at that last ratio, four to two, you'd see that you could simplify it to two to one. And that would allow you to simply divide by two rather than dividing by four and multiplying by two. Keep an eye out for shortcuts like this that could make your calculations faster.